Hi everyone, welcome to Motorsports Wiring Part 2, Concentric Twisting. Um, real quick, before we jump into that, uh, I realized that I did forget to talk about properly sizing your wire to the component that you're powering. So, um, I am going to put a link in the description to a fantastic website, uh, wirebarn.com. They have a wire size calculator. It's super awesome. It allows you to pick either like a two or 5% drop in your voltage. And then um, it will tell you, you know, what you enter the length of the wire and how many amps the component is pulling. And it will tell you, you know, what wire is suitable uh, for the application. So basically, yeah, you need to determine what kind of amperage the component is pulling. You know, if it's a ignition coil, like if it's a really high performance ignition coil, like an IGN 1A, those can pull like almost 15 amps, you know, so that thing needs to have some decent size, you know, some 18 gauge wiring going to it. Or if it's a, it's a five volt sensor or something, you can get away with like 22 or almost 24 gauge. Um, me personally, I've been using 20 gauge for a long time for almost everything besides ignition coils. Um, and there are exceptions obviously everywhere. But um, that's the kind of general rule that I just use. It's just easier. I buy everything in 20 gauge and then ignition coils get 18. Um, and then, you know, shielded wires are also something that's, uh, that's different, which you'll see with this harness, um, the shielded wires are an interesting thing to integrate into a concentric, concentrically twisted harness. But I just wanted to cover that for you guys really quick. So go down there, uh, check out that link and you can start getting, your, your wire sizes and gauges uh, properly set up. So now let's jump in to concentric twisting. Because I am going to be using this sh two strand shielded cable to um, run the injectors in this harness, I am going to show you how to terminate shielded cable uh, as the first thing because that's the core of this bundle that I'm gonna be doing. So yeah, there is definitely a tool that's designed for this, but I don't have it. And I don't feel like buying it, it's pretty expensive. Um, so I'm doing it the slow way for sure. Uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to take off this white sheathing uh, that it comes with, which is Tefcel. Um, so I'm just using a good old razor blade here and you know, taking off a length that I think I will need. And you kinda gotta be careful. You kinda gotta just cut like up because there is a braided uh, stainless, or not, I don't know if it's stainless steel, but uh, there's a braided sheathing inside of this that shielding, forms the actual shielding. Can you tell I can't talk while I work? <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Now, so you check that out. So that is the shielded stuff. And then, um, so you're gonna have to trim this all the way back. Uh, because you don't, you don't need this extra. We need some wires exposed. Um, I can, you can see here, I have one done. Um, hopefully this is focusing, um, and kind of plugged in so you can kind of see where we need the wire there. So what I do is I actually, hopefully it gets this. I see how that bunches up right there. So I bunch it up and I take my side cuts, my flush cuts, and I actually just trim around, you know, you gotta be careful cause you don't wanna obviously cut the wire inside the sheathing, inside the braided stuff. But you just wanna go around the outside and kinda clip that away so that you can remove it. And if you just give it a tug, you can kinda figure out where the extra extra strands are that are still connected. So boom, off we go. Oh, see, I miss, I miss one strand here. All right, so now we've just got a little, a little section of sheathing here. And then we've got our, our twisted wires. Uh, and so these are obviously the conductors and then this is the earth shielding that will go to sensor ground. To properly ground these, you only wanna ground the shielding at one end. Um, the, it's almost always the ECU end in a motorsports application. So you have to use one of these guys. Um, this is a Raychem solder sleeve. 
and solder sleeve. I always say solder. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> just because that's how it reads, I guess. Solder sleeve. Um, take a separate cable and you strip some off the end. Didn't get that quite enough. And you slip the solder sleeve the red part is the actual solder that's a little band of solder in there over the thing so you don't want you want the the braided stuff to be entirely inside the solder sleeve because you want to seal that up and then you're gonna have to slide this other wire in underneath the solder you can see that the braided the uh the wire itself right there is inside the sleeve band and then you heat that up that solders this brown wire to this uh, sleeving, and then you can use your grounds, your sensor ground to ground the sleeving, and then you have an official sh shielded cable. Man, that was a long explanation. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to explain that to you so when you saw it here, uh, you could understand it. Uh, the, the sensor grounds do have to go through this uh, motorsports, you know, this autosport connector because you know, obviously you want the shielded, the, the, the cabling to be shielded the, for the entire length of the cabling. So right up until the injector, uh, this will be shielded and then it will go, you know, go through the firewall, through the autosport connector, all the way back to the ECU and then be grounded at the ECU um, with the sensor grounds. So now that we got out of the way, I'm going to kind of skip ahead, uh, get these injector connectors in here and then start with the concentric twisting. So let me explain to you a little bit about the auto sport connectors. Uh, these are the top tier, top of the line connectors that you're going to find in all of the top level motorsports. So Formula One, uh, WRC, IMSA, you know, th this is the connector that those guys run. Um, and it's because it's just the superior connector. Uh, it's it's super light. It's got toolless removal. It's got great lockup. Uh, it's 100% waterproof. All that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of times, you know, different wiring harness companies, they'll have like the four bolt. It's got like two more bolts. It's got, it's like a mil spec connector. Um, those are good. I mean, they're fine. They just got a couple extra pieces. They're a little heavier. Um, they got some of them have different pins compared to these ones, but yeah, they got like separate back shells. So yeah, anyway, these are these are the Spiri connector, but how this works is this side has a receptacle. So this guy here, and it fits in like this, the, the wire goes in this end, um, and then it clicks into here, locks into place, and then this connector has pins in it. They're really small. Um, and these interface in here like so. So, and these, this so this has like a keyway, so it only goes on one way. And then the sleeve turns, snaps closed, right? So really tight lockup, toolless removal, they're pretty awesome. Um, and this is the tool to crimp these pins and receptacles. Um, it is a DMC crimp tool, uh, 11851, I believe. Let's see the numbers on this guy here. And this is a TH1A turret head. Um, the heads come in and off this, but that's the ones used for auto sport things. You use a TH163, uh, I believe, for Deutsch Connect, for normal Deutsch connectors. Oh yes, this is a Deutsch auto sport connector, just FYI. Um, so anyway, uh, how this works is you're gonna wanna trim off. You do have to kind of find out what works on your trimmer, but you know, just a little section of wire and then the receptacle goes on here. See, it's almost a little too much. Okay, so if you wanted to get really technical, the there is a measurement for 
the end of the insulation to the actual start of the pin. You see how this like go, comes up flush? There's a measurement that that's supposed to be. I don't know if anyone really follows those rules. Maybe if you've got like a crazy automatic wire stripper and stuff like that, but uh, it'd be pretty crazy. Uh, so I don't think most guys worry about that kind of stuff, but because I mean, once you crimp this on, then this goes in the crimper, you crimp it down, it's good to go. Um, and then you just insert it into the connector. So that's how the Autosport connectors function. I just kind of wanted to go over that. They are also, um, wow, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but they are also, you can see all the letters on the back. So each, each um, socket or pinhole is lettered. Um, so that you can, you know, I have a, a rough format here. Obviously, I'm eventually gonna type this out and make it all super nice. So I have a record of, you know, some documentation. So if I ever do have to do repair to this harness, I'll have the documentation here. I can go, oh, okay, it's this pin, you know, that color wire, so let's, let's get in there and, and fix it. Okay, so you can see here I have my single shielded cable strand. Um, and I'm going to do a little more explaining on this Autosport plug after this. But uh, what I have is two stranded 18 gauge shielded cable. Um, so you can see there's two whites, a white and a blue stripe, a white, and uh, this terminated shield. Um, and we're gonna to need to concentrically twist, starting with this as our core. So it makes it a little, a little more difficult and it turns out a, a little less even just because this is kind of bulky, um, but it, uh, it still ends up laying up pretty pretty awesome. So no big deal. So what I do is I start with a couple wires. Normally if I had a single wire and seven other wires, I'd just start with all seven wires and I'd just start twisting from there. But because I have this single core, um, I'm gonna use kind of the method that I use on the next layers uh, where I am wrapping a cup, a few wires at a time. So I'm gonna take this, these four brown wires, which these are sensor grounds, and I am going to start wrapping them. And I wanna go in the opposite direction of the shielded cable. So you can kind of see the shielded cable twist this way. So we're gonna we're gonna take this layer the opposite way. And so you'll, and you'll see that as I as I start. Um, so we wanna leave, leave a little room with the plug um, just because we don't wanna wrap the, you know, we don't wanna twist this section um, for strain relief sake and because that's gonna get a boot on it. So we start here and you just kind of, just kind of end up wrapping it. It is a little hard to explain, but it does kind of have like a natural lay. You kind of wanna, angle the wires at like about 40 degrees ish maybe 30 degrees I guess it depends on the on the layer a little bit but you know what i'm saying like the wire angle this way um can be kind of angled so <clears throat> i'll wrap that over a couple times and then let's do the power cables next so these are the 12 volt um, feeds for our cam sensors. So it is kind of difficult again with this cable just to get it to lay correctly when you first start because you kind of you know you want everything to be smooth a smooth transition into. Uh, I probably could have done a couple more cables in this. This is pretty difficult. There we go, that's a little better. So you can see I'm just kind of wrapping. It doesn't have to be like super amazing until you put the fire, final you know number of wires in that you're gonna use, so. Don't worry if there's little there's little gaps in between wires or anything. Um, 
And now we will do the, we're just going to do the rest of these. So, we're going to start on the bottom. All right. All right, so this might need a couple more wires in it because it looks a little, a little loose on here. We will continue wrapping. That's the kind of thing too, like the, when you're doing things like this that you're not super familiar with, like wrapping around cabling and or, you know, like maybe there's a couple different size wires in it. It's going to change the number of wires that you're going to use in each layer. So that can be a little bit difficult to kind of gauge, you know, like it looks like there needs to be like maybe one more wire in this layer. Um, so we'll wrap a few more um you know twi we'll, we'll we'll twist it a few more times here and then we'll we might have to add another wire in here so that we can really fill out that layer See, I'm kind of, I'm like pulling these back every time. That's because the ends of these will get all twisted up as you, I feel like I'm in this weird position, but uh, as you twist, you know, the ends will kind of twist themselves around. So it's a little bit frustrating sometimes, but you just may got to make sure and really like stretch those out and kind of like pinch them so that they, uh, they untwist themselves. Yeah. Okay. So let's get a little closer view here. So, as you can see, there's like a gap, there's a little bit of a gap here. So this is kind of the transition, which we'll want to pull those a little tighter. But uh, yeah, there's some gaps. So this layer needs more wires. Right now it has 10 wires in it. Um, I wasn't quite sure what to do about, or how many this required to wrap over this cable here, but uh, looks like a few more, maybe 11 or 12. So we will add a couple wires to this Autosport connector and get those wrapped up here. Okay, so what I'm running into with this, uh, with this layer is that it needs, um, it needs one more wire in it to really be filled out. And the problem with that is that I don't really like to split devices between layers of the wiring harness just because it gets, you know, a little confusing and, and it can be hard enough when you're trying to, you know, separate the wires when you're finishing the harness, you know, actually pinning the connectors to try and figure out what's what. And it's easier to do it if it's all on one layer, you know, like, oh, my cam sensor, well, I've got two wires on this layer and one wire on that wet layer or, you know, something more complex, even like a electronic throttle position, uh, connector where it's got six wires. You're like, oh, I got, I got four on this and two on this, you know, it's just, it gets a little goofy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a filler wire, um, which is pretty common in concentric twisting. Um, it's essentially just a dead wire that all it, all its job is, is to, is to fill out the layer, whichever layer you're on. Uh, so that way you can, you know, you don't, again, you don't have to divide up devices or if it's the last layer, you know, you don't have like a, a, a gap that's going to show through your heat shrink and look kind of goofy, you know? So, um, I'm just going to use a gray wire. Uh, I'm just going to zip tie it to this, um, thing here. I'll obviously clip it later, but zip it, tie it here and then wrap it in with the rest of the wires. 
and then hopefully just be able to um, finish this uh, run. Okay, so, so as you can see, uh, zip tied that gray wire in there and uh, we have a nice tight twist on our harness. Um, so that's the first layer. Uh, now the next layer needs to have uh, whatever this layer had in it. So this layer, layer has 11 wires and then you add six wires every time you go up a layer. So this is 11, the next um, layer will be 17 wires. Uh, so I'm going to pin 17 more wires in this guy and we're gonna get going on our second layer. Uh, so let me change the format around. I'm gonna kind of go over the auto sport connector and what that's about and then we'll get after the layer. That's also what the service loops are for. You might have wondered why there are all these little loops in this thing. Um, those are in case a pin gets damaged or something of that nature. You know, even if, uh, you know, let's say uh, there's some, for some reason, a wire fails in here or something. That's just so you have that little extra bit of length um, so that if that happens, you can, you know, you can cut the old pin off and pin a new one on and still fit it in the connector. Because obviously this thing is going to be completely booted up. It's going to be you know, it, it would be really hard to get a new wire in the harness. Um, so that's that. They do provide a little extra strain relief as well, you know, just because they they kind of take all the bending and stuff um, out of the wire a little bit. So uh, they do function that way too, but they're primarily for uh, if something needs to be repaired. So uh, let's get this thing uh, pinned up and with 17 more wires and we'll do our second layer. We have connectors pinned, our service loops made. I've slid the zip tie all the way down. I can't tell where the camera's at really. <laughs> um, and we're gonna we're gonna attempt to uh, wrap this up here. So, um, yeah, I like you. Like I said, as it as you get more layers, it gets a little more difficult to not get things tangled up and that sort of thing. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with five wires. The service loops make things a little goofy too, but that's okay. Get the other wires out of the way here. Kind of spread them out to the side. All right, so again, um, we want to go the opposite way that the rest of or the, this layer is spun. So since this layer is twisted this way, we're going to twist this layer this way. That keeps everything nice and smooth and tidy. If I could ever line up these wires here. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it definitely takes some time for sure. You you gotta get, uh, you gotta get that kind of down that you're definitely going to be spending some time, um, with the whole setup. So, all right. And the reason I'm not um, wrapping this entire thing up is because I'm pretty sure I'm going to merge this auto sport connector and this auto sport connector together. I'm going to Y them and make it into one seamless harness to the ECU. So it doesn't make sense, obviously, to wrap this over the entire length of uh, <laughs> the things because I would have to just unwrap it. Um, yeah, this harness has, uh, has definitely been a, a major challenge for me. Um, you know, it's something 
Uh, I've never done a harness this complex before, so um, it's been interesting. And uh, I originally wanted to, you know, make a video of me uh, building the entire harness and I don't know, I've already just rec not recorded a couple steps, you know, and so I don't want to leave things out. Uh, so you have to uh, let me know if you want me to do, you know, video, actually video a full harness build, because I could definitely do that. It's just uh, not really this one, I think. Um, So, I'm going to go five more wires here. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, it gets a little, uh, definitely can be a little confusing when you start twisting wires, um, you know, just different directions, but, um, yeah, like I said, you just kind of lay up the layers and you kind of wrap everything next to each other, just try and keep it tight, but again, it doesn't have to be super perfect because they'll kind of align themselves as you wrap if you have the right number of of wires in each layer so um yeah as you can see i just wrap and straighten you know i just make sure that everything's staying wires aren't you know wrapping over each other or you know there everything's just staying in the same order so um there's that we're going to grab five more here, which, oh man, the order. <laughs> it's kind of funny, I, um, I was trying to decide what order I should do these in, and I, I you know, I kind of, because I like to wrap everything in the same color next to each other, you know, it just makes the layer look super nice. Um, and without even... Understanding what I was doing, I, I aligned them in uh, the color wheel, Roy G. Biv, <laughs> which I was like, huh, that's funny. Um, but uh, yeah, so we only have a couple more wires to go. How do we want to do this here? And again, just be prepared to just kind of take your time, figure things out, make sure you're really just thinking things through, how things are going to pan out farther in the harness and and that kind of thing. Um, oh, let's see here. Um, out here let's go this way
Oh, so we are getting there. A little closer here. Almost looking like we're filling up our layer. Interestingly enough, but not quite. Got room for one more in this layer, it seems. So, again, calculating out all these layers can definitely be somewhat of a chore if you're not starting with the standard variations of uh, the chart that I linked in the description of the original video and I will link in the description of this video with the concentric, the concentric twist numbers. So, as you can see there, boom. Nice and pretty. Um, you can feel that it's not, again, not super even just because <laughs> the uh, shielded cable um, and you can see we have one extra wire for this for the next layer all right so here I have my last layer pinned out for this connector so I'm just going to start this last layer of wrapping So again, you're just going the opposite way that the last one went. And you are just laying it kind of at that 45 degree-ish angle. Basically just perpendicular to your other wrap. This might be a touch tight, but like I said before, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent dead nuts on uh, as long as you are getting them just wrapped, you know, enough. As long as it's not way too loose or way too tight, then it's kind of fixable and adjustable a little bit until you actually, you know, bind it all with the Kevlar and everything. So. Um, you notice I'm not using uh, the Kevlar lacing tape on this section, uh, mainly because it's just so short. Um, I think I'm going to end up joining these into one big wiring harness, like one big section, one big bundle. Um, not really sure if that's like technically the best way to do it you know it's it's difficult when you're starting out with these things because there's just not a whole lot of information i know that 
you know, generally they say to separate like ignition leads from sensors and all that kind of stuff, but um, it's not really possible when, you when you're taking like the ECU connector, uh, which is 34 pin, I believe, and translating it into like a 61 pin and a, and a 29 pin, you know, it's not really possible to like divide them up where like this connector goes to this uh, thing and the other connector goes to this, the other one, it's, you can't really do it. So I'm not really sure if this is like the most ideal way to do it. If I should have had more firewall connectors. I mean, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I feel like a lot of cars only just have one even. Um, I don't even know how big of a deal it is. I mean, these are hall effect sensors, so they're not, you know, the, the position sensors, the cam and the cranks. So they're not super sensitive, like a VR sensor I know is a lot more sensitive and you'd probably have to run shielded for that. And the ignition circuits or the highest amperage, highest voltage circuits in this are shielded. So uh, yeah, but we're just gonna push on here. Um, I gave her the old Roy G. Biv uh, color scheme here. So uh, you, you notice just for aesthetic purposes, it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, I don't have an indigo, violet, and then black, white, brown. Um, and again, that's just for aesthetic sake. So you don't need to do that. Again, a true motorsports wiring harness is just white wires. So uh, for us novices that aren't quite at that level or don't have any way of marking our connectors, then we're kind of stuck with using separate colors. And I just have the basics. Uh, I have black, white, brown, red, blue, green, yellow, violet, gray, orange. I don't know. And then I have yellow, gray for um, my 12 volt powers. So yeah, I just gotta keep kind of trucking on. Um, I do have like a light violet. Uh, I didn't actually know it was gonna be light violet. Uh, I ordered my wire from Wire Masters and it, they just have a different kind of color, I guess, than the pro wire stuff. The pro wire is like the deep violet. I'm sure you can probably see it on the camera, how there's a light one and a dark one there, but I thought that was kind of interesting. So if you're gonna do all one harness, probably just order all your wire from one place if you can, keep it consistent. I mean, it's gotta be within the specs of M22759 slash 32, so can't be that far out, but it's definitely a different color and it's the same number designation as uh, both these. Let's see here. Both these, this light violet and this dark violet are the same number designation just from different suppliers, so kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, okay, so black, brown, and white on what's left here. Oh. This is where it can get kind of goofy if you're not, um... If you're not careful, you can definitely easily overlap wires with each other that, that you don't want to overlap. Um, you know, they just move out of shape and then there'll be like a hump in your harness and you obviously don't want that. Oh, I forgot one. Oh, that's because it was from the other. There we go. Oh, this is filling this out surprisingly nicely. Let's see here. Maybe you won't have to run so much filler in this layer. Maybe just one filler. That's weird. All right. Again, these... Uh, 
These layups are kind of new to me as far as laying up over shielded cable and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm just kind of playing it by ear as far as how many wires are in each layer. And now my thing is coming on my vise. <laughs> uh, clamp that down a little tighter. Toss this off into the table here. I don't know if you can still see what I'm doing when I'm wrapping down this far, but yeah, I definitely need a couple filler wires in here. It's just a little too uneven. You can see the gaps. Well, actually, from that angle, you can't see the gaps that well, but there's definitely uh, gaps in the harness, so we, we want it to be a nice full layer before we... I mean, you will notice that in the heat shrink. I guess it's not the end of the world if it's the outside layer and there's just little gaps in it like this. You'll just kind of see some little indentations, but if you want it to be as smooth as possible, then you need to put in filler wire. So essentially that just means I typically use gray for my fillers just because that makes the most sense to me. Oh, let's see here. Got a couple pieces here. I'll try one first. I'll put it in here. See how it goes. Filler wires can be difficult for sure because you're just kind of, you know, you don't really want to connect them to a pin in your connector. So yeah, just, I need to zip tie this probably. Because then you're just kind of wasting one, you know, and you, if, if for some reason you eventually wanted to populate those later, you don't want to just have them full of wires that dead end nowhere. So you're just kind of pressing it into your harness that you have. Yep, it looks like I need two of these. Again, zip ties, perfectly acceptable for setting up, you know, just keeping wires where they need to be temporarily. Obviously, they're not going to stay in the, in the harness, but totally acceptable to use for mock-up purposes. More filler, and she goes. You can sort of see as I do this, the whole thing just kind of tightens up. It's pretty cool to watch actually just. Man, that is a wild layer. I don't think I've had every single one of my colors in a layer before. <laughs> Usually there's kind of some repeats, you know, there's voltage supplies or grounds or, which obviously there's a couple of each in this, but. So this is wrapped maybe a touch tight. Um, it looks pretty good. I don't think it's going to be, you know, it's only for this section of the wiring. Because again, I think I'm going to Y them, which you'll see me attempt here <laughs> in just a few minutes. Um, but yeah, that is the connector. That's where it's at. Um, try and give you a little better. Close up here. It's all service looped. It's all connected. It's all good. You can see it starts to get a little loose down here. That's not big of a deal. Well, I guess I'm going to attempt to wire these two connectors together down here. <laughs> um. Yeah, so the difficult part is obviously I have a core of four shielded wires, which itself was kind of a pain. And then this one also has a core of a single shielded wire. So I'm not 100% how it's going to go. So the way I attack this kind of stuff is, I mean, some of it is theory and some of it is just trial and error, you know, like, 
my first thought was that, oh, not a big deal. We can just wrap the wires around the core. Like one, this connector can go around this connector and you're good. But then I forgot about the knock sensor having a shielded cable. So with the shielded cable, I was thinking I can possibly just do a linear twist on the rest of the harness. Um, so the shielded cable will obviously go the opposite direction as this. So as you can see, I have a bunch of connectors now, a bunch of everything. Solution, quote unquote, that I came up with, which I'm hoping works, I might have to redo this, is to wrap this core around this wire, right? Which you're like, wow, that's like a lot. And then, few wraps in here Let's see if I can even attempt to start this here yeah so then do a linear twist of the rest of the wires which just means not have layers really but just have the rest of the wiring fill in this gap here um, so I'm gonna start with this Let's just see, even just, <laughs> just prototyping it here. So we can kind of see how it's gonna go. I know it won't be the prettiest or necessarily the most, you know, perfectly round, awesome looking harness when I do it this way, but I don't really know how else to do it because if I was to only fill in you know the gaps with one layer of wire then this would stick up and then I'd have to wrap the other layer the other way and so it'd just be like a really bumpy harness and it would just look super goofy I think um, just so you're aware F1 harnesses tend to be linearly twisted just because they don't want to run filler wires because that's extra weight and as we know in that level of motorsport weight is the enemy uh you do not have to want to have extra any extra weight anywhere and if you do have to you'd rather be underweight because then if you have to add weight you can usually add weight back into a more advantageous spot f1 harnesses tend to not have not have to have so much strain relief because they're usually contained in some kind of carbon enclosure that goes throughout the chassis or something, you know? So, not so much of a big deal. Okay, so as you can see, it's sort of filled in here. <laughs> it's pretty goofy looking. We'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, then to get all the rest of these going in here, I don't think it's going to be... Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to rethink this. So I'm gonna do a little trial and error here, guys, uh, off camera because, you know, it's sort of boring just watching me twist these things over and over and try to get them right. Um, and I don't want this video to be like four hours long. So um, let me do some experimenting off camera. And then once I get kind of the solution that I've, figured out it's gonna work the best, I will jump back on here, show you kind of either the finished product or, I mean not finished, but the, the twisted product or um, kind of jump in halfway through what I'm doing. So before I do that, uh, I definitely jumped the gun there. Uh, obviously I need to put heat shrink, you know, the Raycam DR25 <clears throat> on these sections of harness before I try and splice them together because then it will not fit. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then you will see me back here trying what I'm gonna try, so. So this is what I've come up with. Um, you can see that it's not nearly as <laughs> perfect as a concentric twist, but what I essentially had to do was, and this is kind of a mess right now too, but 
I had to take all the outside layers of this, wrap them around, and then um, they all didn't quite fit, obviously, because the shielded wire is taking up some room. So then I had to layer them again on top, and then I had to take the first layer of this harness and wrap it on top as well to make it sort of even to like even out. You can see there's still a valley here, but kind of even out the peaks and valleys in between, you know, the big valleys in between the shielded, the white shielded wire. So I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. I mean, it looks fairly even. I think when I, when I wrap this whole next layer over the top, it should be pretty nice looking, but it's essentially a linear twist combined with a concentric twist over the top. It should be interesting. Like I said, I, I haven't done this before. Um, and it's definitely a serious learning process for me. I hope that it's gonna turn out well. I just kind of did like a little shorter section, you know, just as like a test. So I'm gonna get kind of this whole layer done for like a good foot. <laughs> um 30 centimeters and see how it looks and if it looks good then i'm just gonna do it all the way down the line until it has to split again to go to the ecu connectors so wish me luck here we go okay so i managed to get it to be a pretty nice transition now I really wish I would have caught these cut these filler wires to be longer because they end here now. I should have just cut them to be the whole length and then they would have just wrapped into here. But I'm going to have to start some more filler wires in this area, tie them up in there, and then continue on the twist. But this, this is surprisingly even. I mean, you can feel a little kind of, you know, a little bulge, bulge, bulge kind of thing going on. But, like, it looks... It looks really good, obviously, with some more filler in here, but i um, pretty hyped with how this came out. Honestly, this transition was <laughs> a task. Um, I think it's pretty good. It kind of transitions nicely to, like, you know, the the full, I don't know. It's, um, it's definitely not the prettiest. <laughs> you know, I've seen some dudes that really uh, have some, some crazy technique. Um, but it almost comes down closer and then comes fatter again here. So that's nice. And then even on this kind of profile, it doesn't really get uh, any larger than the rest of the thing here. So maybe just a touch. So I think it's going to look really good once it's wrapped up. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Uh, I did not think it was going to even look that good because <laughs> I was like, man, it's just... So yeah, guys, it's it's really important um, that you just experiment and you kind of are up to the task of figuring things out as they go. I mean, I probably just spent an hour on this, um, just trying to get the transitions right and trying to put the wire. I mean, I am trying to like put the right color wires kind of next to each other as much as I can. So that doesn't makes it a little harder but <laughs> um other than that guys i mean you just got to be willing to to put the time in and really just sit down focus think about how you can do this i'm probably not going to show you too much more of me just constructing the harness because again it's kind of boring i mean if you guys want that i can definitely do that on a different harness this guy here, there's just going to be a lot of little tedious steps. If you, if you want me to, to kind of film like a complete harness build, I do have two more harnesses that I'm going to build after this one. Uh, so if you want that, just comment and be like, hey, you should totally just, you know, record yourself start to finish kind of deal. And I can do that. That's but yeah, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope it was informative and I hope you have a great day. See ya.